It's David Wowie. Melpithia has arrived in another Eden and she's showing off the smoothest armpit I've seen in my life. If you're lucky enough to have gotten her, you may be thinking, how on earth does she work? What's she exactly good for besides that armpit? I'll share her best skills and strategies and let you know, is she actually worth it? Don't forget to like and subscribe and check me out on X for more gaming clips, another Eden tips and awesome life advice. Look up at JRPGWOW. Also, if you have your own thoughts and strategies for Milpithia, share them below. Milpithia was announced as part of Global Version's merge with the Japanese version of Another Eden. She came out with the release of Part 2 of the Rise Saga. Unlike the other dark and tragic characters that came out of the previous anniversaries like Melissa, Eva and Ify, Ampidia is a completely quirky goofball. Her personality is super awkward. She lives in the ancient times but says a bunch of modern funny stuff like Yeah, I read the spoilers. Mega super funky wonky side of soupy doer wazzle! This is not what I ordered! I choose violence! Also, unlike her predecessors, Melpithia doesn't get uniquely solo side quests where you play as just her and not accompanied by Aldo. And unlike the past anniversary units, she doesn't have a unique set of skills that immediately stand out. In fact, she may be confusing for some people. So what's Ampidia actually good for besides those dance moves? But before we answer that, how do you upgrade and stellar awaken Melpithia? If you have a four and a half star version and you want to upgrade her to a five star version, what you need is an Oraculum Tome. You just need one of these and you can get it and you have about a 2.8% chance of getting this tome per reward slot if you finish the Nadara Volcano another dungeon. Once you've got this plus 5 chants, 30 prayer and 90 murmur scripts, tray them all in at times forgotten stop to upgrade her to a 5 star version. And to stellar awaken Melpithia, you need 3 all cosmos or her character specific oraculum star charts or you can pull her directly from her character specific banner. I did a whole guide on stellar awakening characters which you can check out after this video. Melpithia is a wind slash character. To me, she can be a good support unit or a good tank unit, but she's not the absolute best at either. That being said, she can also be one of the best healers in the game. I'll tell you why. Let's look at her major skills. First, you need to know this before you even do anything. If you've activated Wind King Stance and you have two or more Arcadia members in the front line, everyone's critical and magical critical damage increases and if you have four Arcadia members, everyone's attack type becomes Wind. So far, each Arcadia member can change everyone's attack type to theirs, Rise to Water, Serious to Piercing. When we get all playable Arcadia members, I'm assuming we can use each member to change the element of the battle as we see fit. So Melpithia will have an important role in changing the entire Arcadia members team to wind. This can be fantastic if you love your Arcadia team and want to use that same team to fight against bosses of different weaknesses. So you can use Melpithia to fight against a boss that's weak against wind. The next thing you need to know is where to put Melpithia. If you want her to perform the best, put her where she belongs mate, the back of the line. That's because of her look over there state, which gets activated when she goes into praying state. In this state, if an enemy inflicts a single target hit, it will hit someone else in the team and not arm pity her. Now why would you want someone else in the team to get hit instead of her? Because Melpithia's best skills are prayer skills and the benefits of those skills stop if she gets hit, which might make you completely lose the fight. I'll show you an example soon. Now let's look at the three skills of hers that I've been using the most. As I said before, she can work as a support unit, a tank unit, or a bit of both, and she can also work as a fantastic healer. The first skill will turn Melpithia into a tank and increase everyone's defense. And that is Future Sight Duck. This skill is based on you knowing that your enemy will be attacking you in the next turn. How does it work? Let's say you know that an enemy is about to attack you. You use Future Sight Duck to lessen the damage of the attack. By the way, get the wordplay here. You're predicting the enemy will hit you, so you duck, which cleverly ties into the fact that in her story, Melpithia's character can actually predict the future. Anyway, when you activate Future Sight Duck, everyone's resistance 
instantly increases by 30% for 5 turns and everyone gets status immunity so you don't get poisoned or anything like that. And here comes the cool part, you stack one prophecy on all party members. When you stack it, every party member gets plus 30 to all their stats except for HP and MP. You can stack it 3 times meaning everyone's stats can increase by up to 90 if you use the skill over 3 turns. Not only that, buff effects are increased depending on how many stacks you have with a max stack of 2. Using Future Sight Duck also puts you in prayer mode. In prayer mode, it reduces any damage you take by 50% gives status immunity, reapplies the buffs I mentioned and increases your physical and type resistance by 30%. What does this mean in plain English? If you know your enemy will attack you, use Future Sight Duck to massively improve your defense and stats. Use it three times in a row and everyone becomes much more powerful. In my experience, this works best if you've had three stacks. Let's look at this in practice. In this example, I fight the Ukwaji clan. With my setup, the buff effects of Future Side Duck wasn't strong enough to handle the instant kill attack, Fists of All Under Heaven, but with 3 stacks, Future Side Duck was good enough to handle the Ukwaji's other strong attacks, which used to knock me out. Our defense looked like it worked best against elemental hits, but wasn't as good against non-elemental hits. My team ends up getting knocked out and my guess is because the last hits were consecutive hits on them. The first hit disrupted Milpithia's prayer, reducing her buffs. But I'm not really sure of this. If anyone knows the answer to this riddle, let us know in the comments. Here's a better example where I fought the strongest boss in the game at the moment, Ice Fields Master. In this first example, I think Ify survived mainly thanks to Melpithia's buffs and in the second attack, Melpithia may have mainly survived thanks to the barrier set up by the next skill I'm about to tell you about. I ended up beating Icefield's master thanks to Melpithia's buffs and the people who follow my X account were first to know this. If you don't have X and want to be the first to know about this stuff, consider becoming a super member on my YouTube page instead. Anyway, if you don't know much about Icefield's Master, you have to realize that Melpithia won't magically solve your problems. Icefield's Master has an attack that does instant kill no matter how strong your defense is, so you still need to prepare against that. I equipped Milpithia with the Curse of Revival Grasser to help her bring back units from the dead. I also had Mariel AS and the sidekick Tetra in there who both can revive knocked out party members. So if you have an enemy that you know will attack you every turn, use Future Sight Duck to increase your defense. The next skill is more of an offense skill rather than a defense skill and that's Future Sight Get Em. You use this skill when you know your enemy won't be attacking you. This could be for example if your enemy is casting buffs or debuffs. Once again, it's a cleverly named skill based on the fact that Melpithia can see the future. Unlike Future Sight Duck which improves everyone's resistance, Future Sight Get Em improves everyone's power, intelligence and speed by 50% for 5 turns, making them better attackers. So if no one in your team gets hit during this turn, everyone gets a prophecy stack and like Future Side Duck, every stack will increase your party's stats by 30 and if you do it 3 times, everyone's stats increase by 90. It then activates a praying state that increases the damage and healing of all party members by 50%, reapplies the buffs I mentioned just then and strengthens any other of the skills buff effects relative to up to 2 stacks. So what does this mean in plain English? Use Future Sight Get Em 3 times to make everyone really strong. So if we look at it in action, here's me using this skill to help Alma Normal Style, Stellar Awaken Melissa and 5 star Non Stellar Awaken Thilly ES achieve 28 billion damage in 5 turns baby. Obviously the other characters had their own buffs to help achieve this much damage but Melpithia had a huge hand in it. If you're interested, I've put the whole recording of this damage test at the end of this video. So use Future Sight Duck to improve defense, Future Sight Get Em to improve offense, and use either of these three times to get everyone's stats to increase by 90. And in my experience, it's when you get that third stack that magic truly happens. The last skill I like to use most is Melpithia's Stellar Awaken skill, Future Sight Tranquility. This stacks 3 tranquility on user, increases everyone's max HP and MP and at the end of every turn for the cost of 1 tranquility gives Melpithia a 3000 HP shield, restores everyone's HP and MP and restores statuses 
all for five turns since it only costs one tranquility to do and you get three each time you use it this can go on for a long time this skill is perfect if you no longer want to rely on tetra kumos or another healer to keep everyone alive during stellar burst it also removes any debuffs enemies put on you and gives you two more tranquility stacks making the effects of this skill last until the end of time in plain english the skill future sight tranquility heals everyone fully every turn so in summary use future side duck if you're on the defense future side get him if you're on the offense and future side tranquility if you need to heal everyone if you don't have milpifia stellar awakened there's some other skills that might be better if you have a win team the first is wabam which can set win king stance and awaken it the next turn next is super duper slice which is a two times xl wind attack on an enemy it reduces their power and intelligence and inflicts wind break meaning your wind attacks against the enemy will double in damage what makes this even better is if you're in another zone it will double the effect of this i wouldn't use melpifia as a wind attack unit as there are better ones out there like stellar awakened suzette and sesta but this could be useful if you want to weaken an enemy and set them up for suzette or sesta to finish off what equipment Equipment and Grassler should you give Ampidia? In my experience, equipment doesn't matter much as she won't be the one attacking. Anything that can increase her spirit or endurance could be useful. In my fight against Icefield's Master, I gave her a badge that was more relevant to the enemy I was fighting. In this instance, the Freeze Resistance Badge. Write a comment if you have your own advice about what equipment she should use. For her grass though, I found the boost proficiency grass though useful for her, which increases her skills strength, intelligence and speed buff effects by 15%. What teams will she work best with? As I mentioned earlier, she'll have a special place for Arcadia only teams where she can turn them all into wind attack units. For me, she works well with everyone. Against the Icefields Master for example, she was with a mixed team of Iffy, Sirius and Mewen for Alter. She worked amazingly with an all crystal team for me too and she's also built to do well with as i mentioned just then arcadia and wind teams so she'll be good with whichever team needs support and finally the biggest question is should you get melpifia and the next question is is she even worth your time should you spend a lot of time stellar awakening her and upgrading her and so forth yes and no Firstly, yes, if you're sentimental. She's a special Japan and global merge character and she plays a big role in the Rise Saga story. Your Arcadia team won't be complete without her in it. Her personality is weird and she has clever skill names. I've known someone who actually acted like her in real life and not once did I laugh at her jokes, but maybe it's because she wasn't an elf with good dance moves and a smooth armpit. And I gotta give Melpifia some credit for choosing violence. I choose violence! I'd say if you're not that sentimental and you have great support units like Mune for Alter, Melody AS and Yif AS and you have great tanks like Mariel ES, Radius AS and you can even say Sawyer AS in some cases, then you may want to save your Chronostones for other characters. In saying that though, Melpifia is one of the best healers in the game. She increases everyone's HP and MP and heals everyone every turn and protects them from status effects. So that could be another reason why you'd want her. But Melpifia ain't easy to figure out, bro. It took me days of testing to find out how she could truly stand out. And so I'd say if you hadn't watched this video, she isn't the best character for beginners. Maybe her skill set was designed to reflect her confusing personality. So share this guide with anyone who's confused by her. So if you get Melpifia and expect her to just work and do these amazing things right away, you might be confused and disappointed. But after watching this guide and liking and subscribing, you can also see what an amazing character she can be. She helped me quite easily survive against the toughest super boss in the game and she helped my crystal team deal over 28 billion damage in a damage test. Here's a full video of this damage test. Basically, I used Alma's brain record to weaken the enemy against crystal. Then I used the same moves from Melissa that I used in the guide that I did. Check it out after this. And I used Thila ES to activate and awaken Crystalline Stance. Then I used Melpifia mainly for her skill, Future Sight Getem to strengthen everyone's attacks. Like I explained, Future Sight Getem is perfect if the enemy isn't attacking you and you want to just smash them.
Shoot! Fire! 